On Tuesday, the National Statistics Office released the provisional estimates of GDP for the last financial year, that is 2021-22. Along with this, they also released the data for the fourth quarter of the last fiscal. GDP, or gross domestic product as we all know, is a measure of the market value of all the final goods and services that are produced in a given year in an economy. The GDP growth rate in 2021-22 came in at 8.7% compared to a contraction of 6.6% in the previous year. This GDP growth rate of 8.7% is lower than the 8.9% which the statistics office had given during the second advance estimates at the end of February. It is even lower than 9.2% that India had estimated the GDP to grow in January during the first advance estimates. But at 8.7%, India will still be the fastest growing economy in the world. This record growth is primarily on account of the low base of the previous year when the GDP growth contracted by 6.6% or 6.5%. The GDP growth in the fourth quarter or the Jan-March period, January to March, came in at 4.1%. This growth was 5.4% in the third quarter of the last fiscal. So if you look at the graph, the growth rate on a quarterly basis has been declining. There are two reasons for it. The first is that the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic caused some disruptions as various state governments started imposing restrictions in the contact incentive sectors like travel, tourism, hotels and restaurants. The other reason for this is the spike in prices due to Russian invasion of Ukraine that led to a global squeeze for commodities, also creating supply chain disruptions. Because of this, commodities like crude, coal, where India has high dependency, became more expensive, which eventually fed into the GDP data. Now, broadly, the sector that emerged as the bright spot was industry, which grew at 10.3%, followed by services sector, which grew at 8.4% in the last financial year. But what are the key takeaways from the GDP data for the last year that may have bearing for the current financial year? The first and the biggest risk to GDP growth is inflation. This was visible in the gap between the real and the nominal GDP growth. Nominal GDP or the GDP which is measured at current prices grew 19.5% in 21-22 but the real GDP grew only 8.7%. The difference between the two is the impact of inflation. So if you strip out the nominal GDP with inflation, it will show you that the GDP deflator stands at a whopping 10.4%. The deflator is basically used to compare the levels of real economic activity from one year to another. It is also a mix of increase in both wholesale and consumer prices. Now, Chief Economic Advisor V. Anant Nageswaran in a press briefing on Tuesday said that prices are likely to remain elevated in the current financial year, which means that even in 22-23, inflation is likely to eat into your income and pose a risk to the government's GDP projections of 8 to 8.5% made in the economic survey. The second big risk is on the consumption side. Private final consumption expenditure or the amount individuals spend in a year on consumption of goods and services when adjusted for inflation shows how it has declined from 63.2% as a share of GDP in the third quarter of the last fiscal to 59.6% in the fourth quarter. This acts as a deterrent to the real consumption even in the current financial year when prices are likely to remain elevated as wholesale price indexed inflation is at 15% and consumer price indexed inflation is at 7%. Private final consumption expenditure is basically an indicator of the demand in the economy and it contributes around 60% to the country's GDP. The good news here is that India's consumption demand has now exceeded the pre-pandemic levels, although it is only marginally higher by 1.5%. The third risk to the GDP growth in the current year is the harsh steps that the Reserve Bank of India will have to take during the year to curb inflation after increasing the repurchase rate or the rate at which commercial banks borrow from the central bank by 40 basis points in May to 4.4%. 
The RBI is now likely to increase the rates further during the monetary policy review on June 8th. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das in a recent interview to a TV channel said that it is a no-brainer that RBI will increase interest rates. But this will also have a huge bearing on the cost of borrowing by individuals or companies for whom the loans will now become more expensive. When inflation is high, the central bank usually increases interest rates to prevent aggregate demand in the economy from rising beyond a certain threshold, thereby curbing inflation. The government has given a medium-term target of 4% to the Reserve Bank of India for inflation with a flexible tolerance band of 2% on either side. Given that CPI came in at 7% in April, well above the threshold level of 6% and is likely to remain elevated in the current financial year, the RBI will have to increase interest rates. However, the chief economic advisor on Tuesday alluded that higher interest rates may not necessarily be a negative for growth as long as real interest rates remain negative. But the story on GDP is not all that bad. There are many indicators that have a positive bearing for the economy in 2022-23. The first one is government's focus on enhancing the money they spend on capital creation by the way of capital expenditure or CAPEX. Over the last three years, the government has ramped up capital expenditure and has a pipeline of infrastructure projects on which it will spend. That has started to show results. The gross fixed capital formation, which serves as an indicator for investments made in the economy, witnessed a strong improvement to 30 percent 6% of the GDP in the March quarter. This was the highest in any quarter since Modi government came to power in 2014. Gross fixed capital formation is one component that brings optimism that the government's focus on capital spending will bear fruits for the economic growth going forward since private spending has still not picked up and remains slow. In terms of contribution to the GDP, fixed capital formation adds about 30% to India's GDP. But private capital spending is extremely crucial for the economy to grow on a sustainable basis as the government's capital expenditure is only a fraction of overall investment in the economy. Although it has increased in the last three years, in the last financial year, which is 21-22, the center's capex was still just 9% of the gross fixed capital formation. And that is where the scope for the real growth lies. The last and key takeaway is on the export growth. Exports now contribute about 21.5% to India's GDP compared to less than 90% last year and around this much a year before that. The country has achieved exports of over $400 billion in 2021-22, the first time that India has achieved that level going forward. Given that India has set a strong and ambitious target of $1 trillion of exports by 2025, this could give a huge boost to India's GDP. Economists expect that there will be negatives for external sector demand on account of sharp tightening in financial conditions, that is globally economies increasing interest rates, weak growth from China and surge in crude prices indicating clear risks for India's GDP growth rate. The government believes that the silver lining from the GDP data that was released on Tuesday is that India is still better placed than many other nations to support growth and that the domestic financial sector is in far better shape to achieve that. This is Shubham Batra for The Print. For more such videos, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.